Support Wrestle Talk. Thank you for your support on Patreon, Blake the the Craftsman Carpenter. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk su- su- Super News. I'm Ollie Davis. We've got a packed show for you today, including WWE Raw and SmackDown's continued ratings crisis, plans for AEW television, and all the latest news on CM Punk's wrestling return. Put the timestamps in the video description below to jump to any of those stories right now. And make sure to have a super click party. Super click and give us a subscribe, click the thumbs up button and answer our question of the day down below. Does wrestling need CM Punk back? Because I'll be replying to people in the comments from out of nowhere. But first, talking of CM Punk, we begin with his favourite ever opponent in WWE. Ryback! The guy Punk once screamed that after a match, either you're doing it on purpose to hurt me or you're just dumb as f***. Which is it? To which Ryback allegedly confirmed, I'm dumb as f***. After the highs of his Goldberg level push in 2012, Ryback left WWE citing creative frustrations and problems with how the company pays its performers in 2016. Since leaving, he started a controversial podcast, legally changed his first name to Ryback, written the self-help book Wake Up, It's Feeding Time, a professional athlete's advice on how to succeed in the game of life, and even launched his own supplements range, which gave the human race one of the greatest commercials ever made. Hey stupid, are you sick and tired of being overweight? Shell shock, extreme fat burner. What's every He clotheslined her so hard she lost all her weight. And now the big guy has leveled up again by incorrectly participating in an Ask Me Anything on Reddit. Instead of hitting reply to people's questions, he just made separate posts for his answers, meaning he created a string of random sentences with no context during the session, and everyone had to figure out what on earth he was talking about. Some were easy to decipher, like first main event standing on the cell was a pretty cool moment, probably being Ryback's answer for his favourite moment of his WWE career, or one once I'm healthy, I will speak to Cody if I feel I can contribute in a meaningful way. They are going to do very well over time, I believe. They have an opportunity to do wrestling the way it always should have been done. Most likely being about him approaching AEW in the future. Others, however, are completely abstract. Like Ryback just posting the name of WWF's mid-90s wrestling plumber character T.L. Hopper. The sentence, as long as the third graders didn't force me to lick white dog sh- after I would take my chances with them. What? What could that even possibly mean? And the most cryptic of all, the one nobody can figure out what he was replying to, just two words. Sponge Daddy. Sponge Daddy. Some words... Some words are just fun to say next to each other. Hopefully it's not part of Bray Wyatt's new gimmick, because it seems he'll be giving out advice to the parents of his fans. Like when Bobby M tweeted Wyatt upon seeing his new Firefly Funhouse that debuted on this week's Raw. My three-year-old was like, Daddy, he's funny. Now I've got to buy her a chainsaw. Thanks. Which Wyatt replied to with some wholesome words. I had a chainsaw when I was a kid, and I turned out awesome. Bray Wyatt is... Sponge Daddy. Bray's new gimmick will hopefully catch on, as WWE needs all the help it can get in its post-WrestleMania Raw and SmackDown crisis. The post-WrestleMania editions of Raw and SmackDown have historically been WWE's highest rated episodes of the year. It's where new feuds and storylines begin, exciting new acts debut, and the main roster landscape is rejuvenated with talent being shaken up between the two brands. But this year... That hasn't happened. Not even slightly. Two Mondays ago saw the lowest rated Raw after Mania in the show's history, and the following week's Superstar Shake-Up was even lower. This trend was largely mirrored over on SmackDown, a Mark's WWE losing one and a quarter million of their viewers in the last four years. And the ratings crisis continued this week, with the first normal post-Mania editions of Raw and SmackDown getting the lowest viewing figures since January. Raw only managed a very disappointing 2.5 
2.37 million viewers, which F4W Online point out is the lowest number in the modern history of the show outside of football season, with over half a million people turning off before the Baron Corbin vs AJ Styles main event. It's all your fault, Baron Corbin. Smackdown was also down, just barely staying above the 2 million mark with 2.07 million viewers, a drop off of over 150,000 people from last week. To further confirm the chaos backstage in WWE and possibly a major factor behind the drastic drop off of viewers, Brian Alvarez has reported the script for this week's Raw was only finalised four minutes before the show went on air. Save us, Tony Khan! You're our only hope. The billionaire Khan family, who are significantly more wealthy than the McMahons, will reportedly launch their rival promotion All Elite Wrestling on TV from this October. And there's already been some good news for its potential success coming out of Mexico. Two of the promotion's top acts, the Young Bucks, who are also co-executive vice presidents in the company, and the Lucha Bros, Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix, main evented last Friday Day's TV episode of AAA, which is one of the biggest promotions in Mexico through their working relationship with AEW. According to Lucha Central, that episode drew a massive 5.4 million viewers in the country, where the Young Bucks won the AAA World Tag Team titles from Pentagon and Phoenix. To put that in perspective, that is over double the amount of viewers this week's Raw got in the US, and up a million and a half viewers from the previous previous week's episode of AAA, showing that the Young Bucks and the Lucha Bros are proven ratings draws. The two teams will face each other again at AEW's inaugural show Double or Nothing on Saturday the 25th of May. And now AEW President Tony Khan has revealed more about their TV plans in a new interview with Chris Van Vliet and how the boundary pushing ECW is an influence. Uh, I think we are doing some very edgy things and I think what you see on our social media is not necessarily going to be what you see in our television product which I do expect uh, to be much more advertiser friendly than ECW uh, but that doesn't mean we won't uh, push the envelope sometimes it doesn't mean that uh, you won't see like really exciting high spots and a lot of what made ECW great was the work and uh, and there were yeah I mean we're gonna have much be be the best uh, caliber in-ring stuff in the world. But given the events from last weekend, there's only one thing we all want to talk about. The chances of CM Punk in all elite wrestling. But first, moustache break. He's a great talent, great performer. I, I don't, I don't know, uh, was that, I don't know if that was uh, Phil, uh, but uh, but uh, no, I, yeah, he's he's great. Uh, and I'm from Illinois. I'm, I'm uh, so uh, you know. Uh, grew up around Chicago sports and uh, he's obviously very popular there. In our top story today, sponsored by WrestleCrate UK, the monthly mystery box full of loads of wrestling goodies. Head over to WrestleCrate.co.uk now and use the discount code WTTV to get a bonus bundle in your first box. It appears... Cons! Interest in Punk goes beyond just simple fan admiration, as he was desperate to sign him to AEW. According to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, Punk was Khan's first pick for AEW before either Chris Jericho and the Young Bucks, suggesting that a huge money offer was on the table for him, going by Jericho's claims that his AEW contract is the biggest of his career. Punk presumably turned the offer down. That was before AEW officially launched in January though, implying Khan trying to get Punk happened late last year. A lot has changed since then. Chief amongst them, the fact that Punk made his wrestling return last weekend under a a hood at MKE Wrestling.
Since he left WWE in 2014, Punk has kept largely silent about wrestling, but in recent months he's been referencing his former career more frequently, nostalgically commenting on Rey Mysterio's post last week, remembering his, Rey's and Eddie Guerrero's three-way in IWA Mid-South Wrestling all the way back in 2002. That was just a few days before Punk turned up under a mask at MKE Wrestling, and now that promotion's founder Silas Young, aka Robert Roode's older brother, has hinted towards a similarly nostalgic reason for his surprise cameo on Busted Open Radio. It made sense with the match being with Ace Steel and having Dave Prezak involved. Those guys are longtime friends and they broke in the business together. Punk had maybe his first match in that building. That building has had wrestling for years. A lot of guys got their start there. Unfortunately, it's going to be torn down early next month, so we were the last event there. I think it's just one of those things where he wanted to pay a little respect or a little homage to it. CM Punk to AEW confirmed. A Charlotte Flair and Andrade getting married? Find out by clicking the video on the right and sign up to wrestlecrate.co.uk using the discount code WTTV by clicking the link in the video description below. I've been Ollie Davis and that was wrestling.